Shabbat Shalom to everybody. This is our pre-Shabbat drasha, and today I want to talk about Acharimot. Uh, at the end of Acharimot, there's a very important pasuk. It is in the 18th chapter of Vayikra Leviticus, a pasuk Dalin. And it is a pasuk that possibly speaks to the heart of what we've all been living in the past 33 days of lockdown. Et mishpatai tasu, you should do my commandments. Ved chukotai tishmiru lelechet bahem, and you shall keep my laws to walk in them, to walk in the ways of them. Ani Adonai Eloichem, I am Hashem your God. And pasuk he, ushmaltem et chukotai et mishpatai, you shall keep my laws and my commandments. Asher yaase otam haadam, that a person should do, vachai bahem, and should live by them. Ani Adonai, I am Hashem. And the concept of Vachai Bahem, and what should live by them, is possibly the main principle in the Torah. Life in this world is of the highest value. In fact, we see that in Halacha play out in many circumstances. If a person is, God forbid, in a life-threatening situation on Shabbat, then a person should do anything in order to save a life, even if there's only a remote possibility that it could be life-threatening or that it could even harm and affect permanently a limb, but not necessarily a person's life. We break Shabbat in order to sustain a life. And not only that, but the Talmud says that you shouldn't ask somebody outside of the community. You shouldn't ask somebody a minor. You should ask the greatest Rav, the greatest Torah sage to break Shabbat in order to save a life because v'chai bahem, life is of the highest value. There are only three exceptions to that mitzvah, uh, to that rule, which are the three cardinal sins, avodah zarah, shvichut tamim, and gilui arayot, idolatry, adultery, and murder. Those are sins that if one transgresses, then that actually takes a life by doing that transgression, either in the spiritual realm of idolatry, in the relationship realm of adultery, or in the physical realm of murder. And as the Talmud says, that if someone is, God forbid, in a situation where they are in life, they're in life's danger, somebody points a gun at their head, God forbid, and says, murder person X, or I will kill you, you're not allowed to murder the other person. Because who says, their blood is more red than yours, is a quote from the Talmud. But aside from those three cardinal sins, which, are, which affect the heart of life itself, life is of the highest value. And in COVID-19, we have really lived this. V'chaim behem. We have kept to all the government regulations, all the restrictions. We've been in lockdown. We've sacrificed coming together as a community. We've sacrificed a lot of things in our personal life. People have even scaled back in their jobs. Children have not gone to school and all the other many, many restrictions that we have successfully upheld now that we're going down to alert level three. It, because of the same principle, the chai behem. Life in itself is more important than any mitzvah. But why does the Torah value life in this world? One would think, and Rashi comments on this as well, that v'chai bahem is le'olam haba, for the next world. One would think you keep a mitzvah in this world in order to attain spiritual elevation, spiritual status in olam haba, in the next world, the spiritual world. But most commentators understand v'chai bahem in its literal in its literal sense, not in the next world, but in this world. Life in this world is of the highest value, and so this world is very very unique. It is the only world, the only realm that it is possible to progress spiritually, to gain spiritual elevation, to refine oneself. In the next world, whatever a person did in this world, 
they will remain in that status in Olam Haba, in the next world, in the spiritual world, based on whatever they did in this world. And one of the stories that really brings it home is the Gaon Mivilna, the Gaon Mivilna, the great Rabbi Eliyahu Gaon, a 16th century rabbi, was probably one of the greatest rabbis of all time. He held tzitzit, he held his tzitzit in his hand while he was dying. And he said, if I only had one more moment to do one more mitzvah in this world, all I want to do is another mitzvah in this world. And then shortly afterwards, he passed away. But why was that so important to him? Surely the Gaon Mivilna who learned Torah, who was a Torah sage, one of the greatest rabbis of all time, is looking forward to the spiritual world in Olam Haba, to being close to the Shekhinah, being close to Hashem and Hashem's presence, which is the meaning of the word Shekhinah. Why was he clinging on to his tzitzit in this world before he passed on to the next one? And in order to understand that, we have to understand the secret of a mitzvah, of doing a mitzvah. A mitzvah is wrongly translated as a commandment. Tzav does mean to command in modern Hebrew and even in biblical Hebrew, but a mitzvah means much, much more than simply something that God commands a person to do, and therefore a person is obliged to follow through with that commandment. Tzav actually comes from the root word of a hook, like Captain Hook, but like a hook. So you have that hook in this world that hooks up to the next world, to the spiritual world. A mitzvah is our unbelievable opportunity to connect to a world that is beyond the physical, transcends the physical, within the physical world. It is our ability to connect to the spiritual world and to elevate ourselves in that realm, to become closer to God in this world while being in our body in the physical realm. It is nothing short of mind-boggling and amazing if you really wrap your head around it. And that is the opportunity we have in this world. Hashem put us, each of us in this world, for a reason. And in fact, I'll take it a step further, that we may have a perception, some people may have a perception that in this world we're dependent on Hashem. There's many things outside of our realm of control. Just like this virus is outside of the realm of pretty much anybody's control. And we all had to just keep ourselves safe in order to keep the pasuk v'chai b'hem. And we feel, some people feel like we have to dive into Hashem, we have to be dependent on Hashem, and Hashem should take away this virus. And that feeling of dependency is very, very strong in these past four plus weeks. However, the Torah teaches us that actually the reverse is true. We're not as much dependent on Hashem as as Hashem is really dependent on us. Sounds a little bit blasphemous at first, but if we dig deeper, we'll see that what that means is that Hashem, God, rules the world, and God is transcends time and space, is truly omnipotent. And really, His existence, of course, doesn't depend on the physical realm at all. However, His presence in the world, God's presence in the world, He made it so that it's 100% dependent on us, dependent on us doing the mitzvot. And as it's put by the Orachayim HaKadosh, a great Moroccan rabbi from the 16th century, Rav Chaim ben Atar, he says that Hashem is dependent on us and by doing a mitzvah, we are the vehicles that bring Hashem's presence into this world so that Hashem could walk among us. So we are the vehicles of bringing spirituality, bringing the Torah's message, bringing values into this world. That is what we do. That is our mission. And that's why v'chai b'hem, and, and you should live by them, is of the most highest value. The, the highest achievement a person could ever achieve in this world is to connect to spirituality while being in this world. 
where Judaism is not about the next world. It's about the here and now. And if one has to sacrifice coming together as a community, if one has to do Zoom sessions instead of instead of coming together, if one has to sacrifice everything that we have during this lockdown, and hopefully the restrictions will get lowered as it's safe to do so. V'chai uh, living through the mitzvot is of the most highest value, and hopefully we'll all continue to embrace the opportunities to do mitzvot within our bubbles, and I want to wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom.